I need to say that I had the privilege of knowing Rachel for just six years. So uh, her daughter, Janet, thank you, Grim, was uh, very gracious uh, about giving me some background about Rachel that I wouldn't have known, and I'd like to share some of that with you. Rachel Gillette was born on September 10, 1914, at Orchid, California. She was the third child of Sidney P. and Uretta Dayton, and a week or so after her birth, her mother took her by train uh, to Bradley and then by wagon to their home in Bryson. Welcoming her home with her father was her sister Olive, who was about five years old then, and her brother Clyde, who was 15 years old. Rachel said she was considered a tomboy during her early years, mischievous, loved the out of doors, and I think that shows in some of her paintings. Living miles from other children, she played imaginary games, and I want us to keep that in mind too, because uh, I think that shows in her paintings later on. Her pal and playmate was a wire-haired Airedale, and later on she enjoyed riding horseback. Once a month, the family would go to town for groceries. Rachel started school at Bryson and remembered walking with her sister Olive in nice weather and riding horseback on rainy days, often behind her father underneath his flowing raincoat. She said she was unable to see anything under that raincoat. She had to look down and she was fascinated to watch the water and the mud squirt out from under the horse's feet. Now, I think we should keep that fact in mind, too. Um, after three years of, of uh, drought, uh, the family moved to Chalchilla, where they stayed for three years working their cattle and working in dairies to make ends meet. And they moved to Cafe in 1927. By the way, all these little towns, I had to look up on my atlas because I didn't know where they were. Uh, Rachel rode horseback to a one-room grade school and graduated in a class of three children from grammar school. Soon the family moved to Winton and then finally home to Bryson. Rachel attended high school for one year in the Lockwood Valley, and people don't believe that the King City Joint Union High School had a a high school in the Lockwood Valley that they did. Then, due to the distance from Bryson to King City, she lived with Les and Helen Hitchcock, who owned a pharmacy here in King City, and stayed with them until she graduated. She was married in Hesperia in 1935, had three children, Richard, Janice, who is here tonight, and Raymond, and unfortunately, her son Richard died in 1982. Uh, through the years, Walter and Rachel and their family lived in various homes in the Lockwood Valley and then eventually were able to build their own lovely home in Lockwood. While raising her family, and this is so typical of American women of my era and Rachel's era, uh, you cook, you sew, you clean, you you uh, raise your children and support your husband in every way. And besides that, she drove a school bus and worked as a secretary. However, when she was in high school, she took several classes in art and drawing, and she showed a lot of talent. As the years went by and those children were more or less on their own, she was able to turn back to her drawing and her painting. and uh, and painted many things on commission. Uh, she was very close to nature and to the South County area and to the people who live here. And so it was natural for her as she had more freedom to not only paint but to become involved in our local history. And, um, and that's, what, that's been my experience with Rachel. I found her to be, and I, I learned a lot from her, a very careful, accurate historian. If she found an error in a printed book about Monterey County, she was quick to correct it, send, you know, to call the author's attention to it, 
and to my copy of Lost Adobes of Monterey County. She went through it with me and and pointed out every error because you can't, you none of us should revise history. We should pass on to the future accurate history. Her, uh, two of her interests were the restoration, hopefully, of the Dutton uh, Hotel and uh, watching it melt down year after year was a true sorrow to her. Finally, with Kathleen Andrus and Catherine Fruden, they started uh, the San Antonio Valley Historical Association with the hope that they could do something about the Dutton ruins and eventually were able to put a shelter over uh, what's left of the Dutton Hotel. They raised the money by having spaghetti dinners, by having auctions, by having bazaar sales, and, uh, uh, and because they couldn't do very much with the Dutton Hotel, they became interested in the Tidball store, and um, we just, just heard something from Ramona Duck about the Tidball store in the Halone area. Um, Rachel made oral tapes uh, from older people who knew the history of, of the Salinas Valley or Southern Monterey County. She kept a scrapbook of, of, of um, articles and pictures and uh, started a memorial book of people who uh, in this area who died. And when I took that job over from her, she made it very clear to me that I should be careful to even put which cemetery these people were buried in because it had been her experience that families from other places would come find, to find out that fact, you know, where was my great-great-grandfather buried or my grandfather buried. Um, the thing that I, well, I love many things about Rachel, obviously, but one of the things that that delighted me about her was that here she was, a perfect lady, very gentle, proper person, but she took on the United States Army <laughs> and was a burr under their saddle. <laughs> it it uh, disturbed her that the Army, uh, after World War II, used some of the old adobes as targets and destroyed them in that way. And uh, though she always was very careful to get the Army's permission to go on the property, the Army property, um, I think that she sort of bugged them a little bit by wanting to check out exactly what the United States Army was doing to preserve the things they had agreed to preserve. I, I said that we should keep in mind her imagination and her love of nature and her eye for detail, the horse's hoofs, because I think that's very evident in the things that she has painted. And um, um, to me, as part of this celebration of women, I would like to mention that I think Rachel stretched her mind and her experience and, um, and handed that down to all of us. She certainly was a model for me in, in so many ways, showing that you don't have to be 20 or 30 or 40 to accomplish good things. 